Good day, sir. It's Mark, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another warship brief. Today we'll be talking about the Type 45 destroyer, or as it was originally to be called, the Horizon class. Now, the Horizon project was a joint project between France, Italy, and Great Britain. This was a project where all three nations were collaborating to create the next generation of anti air warfare destroyers. The program was started as the Common Next Generation Frigate. This would focus around PAMS, a system that had 1045 or MPAR, which was a multifunctional radar, integrated into the ASTA 15 slash ASTA 30 vertical launch anti air missiles. This would also require a vessel to be large enough to house the three ton radar atop of a large enough mast that could actually take its weight. Problems emerged almost immediately. The primary problem was that of the differing requirements, as you possibly expect from a multinational effort. The French wanted an anti-aircraft escort for the Charles de Gaulle, but the limited range was due to the self-defense capabilities of the carrier. Italy too required only close range capabilities, as in its home waters of the Mediterranean, the ships would operate under Italian air cover or escort from the carrier Cavour. Britain, in a move that would surprise absolutely no one who have studied naval history, wanted something different. They required a much more capable vessel that could throw a large defensive bubble over a fleet operating in hostile areas. The compromise that largely solved this problem was the adoption of the standard radar interface, which allowed France and Italy to install the MPAR multifunctional passive electronically scanned array and for the UK to install the more capable Samson Active Electronically Scanned Array. The Samson has a higher data rate and an adaptive beam which allows for greater ability to track multiple targets, long range detection of low RCS targets, a lower false alarm rate and overall higher tracking accuracy. An international joint venture company or IJVC, was established in 1995, comprising of the National Prime Contractors, DNC for France, Gec Marconi in the UK, and Osanti in Italy. In the period of 1995 to 1996, significant arguments, changing requirements, and technological problems led to the slippage of the in-service dates of the frigates to around 2006. Rewinding the clocks very slightly to early 1997, a disagreement emerged as to the choice of the vertical launch systems for the PAMS slash ASTA missiles. France and Italy favoured their own sliver vertical launch system, while the UK was leaning towards the American Mark 41, capable of firing the Tomahawk land attack missile. This issue was eventually resolved when the sliver launcher was selected by the PAMS development team. On the 26th of April 1999, the UK announced they would be withdrawing from the CNGF project to pursue its own national design. The Financial Times summarised the main disagreements between the partner countries, and the UK wanted a large destroyer which could patrol large areas such as the Atlantic, compared to France's desire for a smaller aircraft carrier escort, and Italy's intention to use them in the Mediterranean. Secondly, the UK wanted the ships with wide area defence capabilities, able to protect large numbers of ships rather than the protection from missiles targeted in the frigate's general direction. Finally, the UK desire to see Marconi appointed as prime contractor was accepted by France, but only in return for DNC or DCN, sorry, being given the role as prime on tractor for the combat management system. The UK wish, wish to see BAE-led consortium given the role. Who would not accept this? Summing up the changes from the original specification, the UK's Chief of Defence Procurement is reported as said, and quote, it's not common and it's not a frigate, end quote. The resulting Type 45 destroyer is armed with PAMS, Mr. System, and has benefited from investment in the Horizon project. And so, the Type 45 will start to take shape in design. 
The Type 45s take advantage from some development work and also the usage of the Sea Viper air defence system and also the 1045 radar. The ships would be built by BAE Systems. Six in all, Daring, Dauntless, Diamond, Dragon, Defender and finally Duncan. These vessels are 8,700 tonnes as standard and 9,400 tonnes fully loaded. The ships are 152.4 metres long, 21.2 metres wide and have a draft of 7.4 metres. We have two Rolls-Royce WR21 gas turbines and two Watsilla diesel generators producing power for all ship systems including the induction motors powering these ships to propellers up to 32 knots. The ships are able to travel roughly 7,000 nautical miles at 18 knots and will need to take on diesel fuel and AVCAT. The vessels are also limited to the amount of fuel but also to the food stores for the 191 crew but this can increase to 285. As I alluded to earlier, the vessels were designed around the PAMS system, meaning the ships have radars designed around anti-air. And these are as follows. 1045, which is also known as Samson, is the multifunctional radar. This is the ball mast on top of the foremast. This is integrated into the Sea Viper surface-to-air system. This radar can detect targets out to past 134 nautical miles. 1046, or is more commonly known as Martel or S1850M, is located on the forward part of the hangar. This is an early warning radar, and as such is essentially the large TV style radar, but this is a passive electronically scanned array. And this radar is able to track ballistic missiles out to at least 10, about 1,080 nautical miles and 286 nautical miles in the standard air roll. Two 1048 navigational India band radars are also carried, one on the foremast, the other on the quarter, aft quarter of the hangar. One 1047 navigational Echo Foxtrot band radar is also carried on the foremast. The ships also carry an MFS 7000 bow mounted sonar. The ships come with advanced weapon systems, and these are as follows. One 4.5 inch BAE Systems Mark VIII naval gun located on the forecastle on one deck. Two 30mm ASCG guns located amidships on sponsons each side of the funnel on 03 deck. Two 20mm phalanx closing weapon systems are located one on each beam of the ship on sponsons on 02 deck. Ships also carry two miniguns, or HMGs depending on the mission, and six GPMGs. The missile systems of the ships consist of the following. 48 vertical launch sliver silos located in a missile box on the forecastle for either Asta 15, capable of firing out to 16 nautical miles, or Asta 30, capable of firing out to 65 nautical miles. Three of the ships are also fitted with two quad anti-ship missiles. These are the Harpoon anti-ship missiles, and each facing outboard. The forward one facing to port, and the aft one facing to starboard. For defence against anti-ship missiles, and also torpedoes, the ships are also fitted with at least two six-barrel Seagant decoy launchers, two each side of the vessel, as well as surface ship torpedo defence systems. The ships were built by BAE Systems Naval Ships, originally created by the BVT surface ships by the merger of the surface arms of BAE Systems and Vosper Tornycraft. The two companies previously built ships in collaboration. BAE Systems 2 Glasgow shipyards and the single Portsmouth shipyards are responsible for the different blocks, and Scotston Yard built blocks Bravo and Charlie, a 2600 ton section containing the gas turbines, starting with the hangar and ending at the bridge section, and also Block D, which was the bridge. BAE Systems Portsmouth was responsible for Blocks Echo and Foxtrot. 
essentially from the bow to the bridge, as well as the funnels and also masts. For two ships, well, ships two and six, Alpha and Delta, or Alpha 2 Delta, were assembled in the ship's blocks and outfit hall at the Govan shipyard, and taken fully outfitted to the Scotston berth. The masts and funnels were also fitted before launch. For daring, Block A was assembled at Govan and moved to Scotston, where it is mated with Blocks Bravo and Charlie, which were already fitted with the gas turbines. The bow section, or Echo Foxtrot section, were ma mated in Portsmouth and taken by large barge to Scotston. These were the final blocks to be attached. At this point, the hull was launched into the Clyde and towed to Scotston Dry Dock, where the masts and funnels were also fitted. The masts, however, were partially outfitted with equipment. For example, the mast for 1045 was sent to Talus to be fitted with the radar's equipment. Once this is complete, the remaining equipment is fitted. Radar arrays, bow-mounted sonar propellers, missile equipment, and also the 4.5-inch gun. The modular construction agreement was agreed in February 2002. However, when the original contract for three ships was signed in July 2000, BA Systems was to build the first and third vessels, whereas Vospatonicraft was to build the second. However, by the end of 2010, all six Type 45 destroyers had been launched, and the first two were in commission, and the remainder were fitting out. By 2012, all destroyers were structurally complete, and the production line had been closed. Duncan was the last of the Type 45 destroyers, and was commissioned in Portsmouth Naval Base on the 26th of September 2013 and enter service in 2014 after trials and training. HMS Daring, the first ship of the class, made a Western Atlantic deployment, but has actually found that a propeller problem had occurred during the transit, and thus she was sent back to Portsmouth, refitted, and she went out on a couple more deployments, including a world tour. She is currently undergoing maintenance prior to sailing up to Birkenhead for refit. Dauntless, most commonly known as the worst 45, due to her being in reef for the last three years and quite literally breaking down most of the time. However, she is expected to travel up to Birkenhead in the first half of this year to receive the engine refit. This is going to start happening to the rest of the Type 45s. Dauntless is expected to rejoin the fleet later next year, hopefully fully fit and ready to deploy. HMS Diamond, the third ship of the class. So, Diamond was in the Middle East area of operations in 2012, during Operation Rescue in February 2014, she escorted the MV Arc Futura, carrying chemical agents from Syria. On the 8th of May 2017, Diamond fired an Aster 30 off the coast of Scotland, proving that essentially Aster can engaged ballistic missiles. On the 4th of September 2017, Diamond sailed for a nine-month deployment in the Middle East. Initially scheduled to leave HMS Monmouth, she was instead diverted to take over flagship of Standing NATO Maritime Group 2 from her sister ship HMS Duncan. When her intended relief, HMS Ocean was redeployed to provide relief to British overseas territories in the Caribbean in wake of Hurricane Irma. Diamond was relieved of her NATO duties upon the return of Ocean from the Caribbean on the 30th of October, and resumed her planned deployment to relieve Monmouth. However, on the 23rd of November, the Times reported that Diamond was being forced to abandon her deployment and return to Portsmouth early due to mechanical issues, which were later confirmed by the MOD. HMS Dragon is the fourth ship of the class and possibly the most famous due to her massive red dragon painted on her bow. In August 2013, it was reported that Dragon was sailing with the USS Nimitz carrier group in the Arabian Gulf, acting as the main point ship for the aircraft carrier. Again in August 2013, several typhoons from 
06 Squadron of the RAF were exercising with Dragon and US fighters in the Gulf. It has sailed westward to the eastern Mediterranean. In April 2014, Dragon was deployed to the waters of Scotland. After having sailed from Portsmouth to track the Russian warships Vice Admiral Kulikov and Yidloy 1 class destroyer. She was part of the Royal Navy's Atlantic Patrol tasking in late 2014, in which she visited places such as South Georgia Islands, the Falklands Islands, and with a transit through the Panama Canal. In October 2016, Dragon was sent to do track two Russian corvettes in the Atlantic Ocean and the Bay of Biscay during a major deployment of Russian naval forces near the United Kingdom. On the 11th of February 2017, Dragon rescued the 14 crew of the British yacht Clyde Challenger, which had been demasted and was adrift in the Atlantic Ocean 610 nautical miles southeast of Land's End. Clyde Challenger was then subsequently scuttled. On the 26th of November 2018, it was announced that Dragon had discovered a suspicious boat whilst on operations in the Middle East. Sailors and Royal Marines boarded the vessel and found 148 hidden bags on board containing 3,048 kilograms of hashish. On the 15th of March 2019, Dragon made its seventh drug bust. 224 kilograms of heroin from a fishing vessel in the Arabian Sea. During her time in the Arabian Sea, Dragon made eight drugs busts and received over 18 tons of narcotics. This is actually a record for the most successful bus and also number of busts and the total weight of drugs seized by a Royal Navy ship in the Middle East. However, as of March 2019, HMS Montrose took over the current role of Op Kippian in the Middle East. However, Dragon came back from the Middle East and went straight on to Westland 19, an exercise operating with HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Northumberland, essentially building up the carrier strike capabilities of Britain's two new supercarriers. And thus, coming straight off that, with a one minute's leave, she is now to deploy to the Middle East to relieve HMS Montrose. So, well, dippers. HMS Defender is the fifth member of the class. The ship left Scotsdon on the 21st of July 2012 on her delivery voyage and entered Portsmouth at 1000 on the 25th of July 2012, where BA Systems and the Royal Navy conducted a formal ha handover ceremony. At 1400 that day, she raised the White Ensign for the first time as a Royal Navy vessel under the command of Commander Phil Nash. The vendor was commissioned on the 21st of March 2013. She stopped off at her home on the Clyde for final testing and to open up to the public on Saturday 30th of November 2013, before going into active service. Defender sailed 700 miles from Portsmouth to the northeast of Scotland, and on the 19th of December 2013, she met the Russian task group of six ships, including the aircraft carrier Admiral Kuznetsov, and escorted them down the east coast of Scotland. The vessels were held back due to bad weather and anchored off Maury Firth. Defender was part of Operation Sh Shader, employed as the air defence guard ship for the US Task Group Force 50. The ship sailed on the 19th of October 2015 for a second deployment in the Middle East region, or essentially second deployment on Op Kippian. On the 18th of November, it was announced that Defender would deploy alongside the French Charles de Gaulle carrier battle group, deployed off the coast of Syria as an air defence escort. This was in response to France's activation of Article 42.7 of the Euro European Union Treaty. On the 27th of April 2016, Defender escorted the ocean liner RMS Queen Mary II for the Gulf of Oman. In June 2016, Defender, in conjunction with the Australian and French ships, seized a total haul of 1,020 kilograms of Hayash from a fishing dhow south of Oman. 
Defender returned to active service in April 2018 after a major 20-month long refit in Portsmouth. On the 12th of August 2019, Defender set sail for deployment in the Asia-Pacific region. And on the 24th of August 2019, Defender was redeployed while en route to the Asia-Pacific region to the Persian Gulf and the Strait of Hormuz in order to bolster the British presence and escort British shipping. In December 2019, Royal Marines from Defender confiscated 131 kilograms of crystal meth after searching a dhow in the Arabian Sea. The haul had been estimated to be a total worth of £3.3 million. Duncan is the 6th and last Type 45 destroyer and was commissioned on the 26th of September 2013. She entered service on the 30th of December of the same year, four months ahead of schedule, and after a period of trials and training, on the 2nd of March 2015, Duncan left Her Majesty's Naval Base Portsmouth for her maiden deployment to the Mediterranean Sea and also the Middle East. On the 7th of July 2015, Duncan joined up with the US Navy Carrier Strike Group 12 to strike Islamic State of Iraq. In April 2016, Duncan was one of the several Royal Navy ships exercising with the French Navy in Exercise Griffin Strike. In October of the same year, Duncan escorted the frigate HS Richmond and was dispatched by the Ministry of Defence to intercept and manmark a fleet of Russian Navy vessels, including the flagship the Admiral Kuznetsov, which were passing through the English Channel on their way to Syria. In November, they were sailing off the coast of England. Duncan suffered a total propulsion failure and was, well, towed into Plymouth. Duncan then sailed for Portsmouth in June 20, 2017 to assume the role of flagship of NATO's Standing Maritime Group 2, operating in the Black Sea and the Mediterranean. Duncan was due to be relieved in September 2017 by HMS Ocean on her final deployment. However, Ocean was redeployed to the Caribbean Sea to provide relief to British overseas territories in the region in the wake of Hurricane Irma, as mentioned before with Defender. Duncan was instead relieved by HMS Diamond, which was berthed in Gibraltar en route to the Persian Gulf to relieve HMS Monmouth. Duncan returned to Portsmouth on the 22nd of September 2017. She assumed NATO duties in January 2018, visiting the Mediterranean and Black Sea's ports such as Constanta, Suda Bay and Split, and again took command of SNMG2, returning to Portsmouth on the 13th of July 2018. In November and December of 2018, Duncan featured on the Channel 5 television programme Warship Life at Sea which captured everyday life on board the vessel during her NATO deployment earlier that year, including confrontations with Russian warships and aircraft. On the programme, it is frequently claimed by the ship's crew that you can detect a tennis ball-sized object moving at three times the speed of sound from over 100 miles away. That's off 1045. In December 2018, it was announced that Duncan would be affiliated with the town of Scarborough on the Yorkshire coast. In July 2019, Duncan visited Odessa Harbour in Ukraine, and on the 12th of July the same year, she was ordered to the Persian Gulf in response to threats against British shipping by Iran. On arrival, she joined the frigate HMS Montrose in protecting cargo vessels and oil tankers. In September 2019, Duncan returned home to her home base of Portsmouth, where she currently is in refit. And if you want to watch any more of that deployment, it's currently been shown on Warship Life at Sea Season 2 on Channel 5. Before I wrap up this brief today, you can't talk about Type 45 without mentioning the propulsion issues. We have alluded to them slightly earlier, but essentially the propulsion system had a tendency to cut out and cause a TLF, or Total Electrical Failure. This has been a tendency to occur in hot waters, and this is to do with an intercooler supplied by Northrop Grumman being unreliable. And such, as mentioned before with the dauntless part of the video, 
all ships are going to be sent up to Birkenhead to have new engines fitted and also an additional diesel generator to make sure that if the same thing happens again, the ships do not have a total electrical failure and they will have a diesel generator to kick in and keep power to the ship. And that concludes the brief on the Type 45. Hopefully you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully you learned something new. And if you have, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, follow me on Discord where you can ask for ships for me to do. Anyway, take care folks. Have a good one. See you next time.